Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 80, and what I'd like to discuss today is the Doppler effect. Now, the Doppler effect is when the wave's frequency appears to change because of the motion of the sound that's making the source that's making the sound or the observer. And what's important is that the frequency of the wave doesn't actually change. It just appears to change. Now, the Doppler effect is named after Christian Doppler, and he was an astronomer who was studying light and how the light from different stars was reaching the Earth. And what he found was that the frequency of the light or the colors of the light that was being emitted from stars changed based on whether or not they were moving closer to us or farther away. He noticed a shift in the pattern of the waveforms that, we, that were being produced. Now, when light is coming towards us from another galaxy and we look at it, we're going to think that the colors of the light are shifted in a certain direction. When they're going away from us, it'll be another direction. So we have what we call the blue and the red shift. But before we get into that, let's discuss, let's discuss the Doppler effect uh, in and of itself. Now, like I said, it's when the wave's frequency appears to change, but it doesn't actually change. And the reason it appears to change is because the wave or the source making the wave is moving closer or farther away from each other. If you think about a wave being formed, you have this series of concentric circles that are emanating, kind of like the ripples on a lake. If I drop a pebble in it, the ripples will spread outward. Well, if I start to move something closer to that waveform, they're going to hit the wave fronts, which is the outer part of the wave, more often, more frequently. So a person who is approaching a sound wave will actually hear it as a higher pitch. Now remember, frequency of light is color and frequency of sound is the pitch or the note that is being produced. So what we have is a situation where if we get closer to a wave source, if the wave's standing still and emitting a single note, let's say like an alarm or something like that, and I run towards that alarm, what will happen is I will think the frequency is higher than it really is. If I run away from it, I'm going to try to outrun the waves in, in effect, and I will hear those waves less frequently or the frequency will go down. So depending upon the situation, if I approach the source or, or the source of the waves are coming towards one another, the frequency goes up. And if they're going apart, the frequency will go down. What's important is that all waves experience this, not just sound waves. The most uh, common example of the Doppler effect is when you hear a siren and it's approaching you and you'll hear that the pitch goes up. The problem with most sirens is that they're not a single note. So a more effective example may be a car horn. If you listen to car racing on television or in person, you'll notice that every time the cars approach, the sound appears to go up uh, in terms of pitch as it approaches. And then as they recede away from you, the pitch goes down. Now, unfortunately, the volume is also changing as well because they're getting closer to you. So we often mistake the volume with the Doppler effect. But the Doppler effect is only the frequency of the waves that are changing. And remember, the frequency is not changing at all to the drivers. If someone hits their horn on a car, the frequency of the car's horn stays the same for the driver. It's only the people who are moving relative to the car itself who will experience a change in the pitch. Now, once again, if it's a higher pitch, that means that the object and the sound waves are getting closer together. That's because as they get closer, you're hitting the wave fronts more frequently. If you hear a lower pitch, it's when they're going farther apart. You're hearing it less frequently as, as you move farther away from the source of the, the wave. Now, if we look at a, an example of a visual representation, this is a series of concentric circles. At the center is the source of the wave. It could be a tuning fork. It could be a car horn. It could be anything. Well, if everybody's standing still, as the wave spreads outward like the ripples in a lake, you will hear a single pitch, a certain pitch. Remember, the outer points of the wave are known as the wave front. And over time, what will happen on a lake is that wave front will dissipate and the previous circle will replace it. Now, as we start to move an object, in this case to the right, you'll notice that all the waves, all the circles are getting bunched up on the right. So that would be anyone standing to the right of this wave source would hear a higher pitch. 
anyone standing on the other side would hear a lower pitch. As we get far, uh, farther and farther forward, you're going to notice that the pitch goes up, and if it's a car horn or something like that, as it passes you, the pitch would then go down again. You could also simulate the same thing. If you had a, a siren on, let's say, a fire uh, station, what would happen is as you run closer to the fire station, you would have the pitch appear to go up, and as you pass the fire station and run away from the fire station, the pitch would go down. So in this example, in this diagram, everything to the right will hear a higher pitch, everything to the left will hear a lower pitch. The example of the fire truck, this is another visual, where we have everyone standing still, all the wave patterns are the same. They're, they're equally distributed throughout the diagram. Below, you'll notice that the wave forms are bunched up on the right and spread out on the left. On the right, the person would hear a higher pitch. On the left, the person would hear a lower pitch. Now, the firefighter on the fire engine itself would hear a constant frequency. It would be the same frequency the whole time because they're moving with the sound wave. Just like if you're in a car and you hit your horn, you're going to hear a single note. You're not going to hear it change as you're moving. You, as you're moving with the car relative to the car itself, will hear a constant singular note. Now, once again, light experiences the Doppler effect as well. And when we have no motion, there's no shift in the colors. If we approach the source, it will be a blue shift. All of the colors would shift towards the blue end of the spectrum from red towards blue. If we're going away from one another, it would experience a red shift. Most of the stars in, 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 our, in our universe, most of the galaxies are spreading apart due to the Big Bang exploding and causing all the galaxies and stars and planets to spread apart. So the light that we get from most galaxies is receding from us. So often you'll hear the term red shift when dealing with astronomy. There can be situations where objects are approaching us. Maybe they're traveling faster than we are as they spread out, and that would experience a blue shift. But typically, we're experiencing mostly red shifts with astronomy. Now, it is possible to actually go faster than the sound waves that are produced in the first place. In that case, you can actually break the sound barrier. And many times, jets can break the sound barrier. And what happens is that's a situation where the plane is traveling faster than the sound waves that are being produced. Now, sound waves move at approximately 340 meters per second, and the temperature determines how fast they go. And we'll actually talk about that in a future lesson. But for now, it's around 330 at zero degrees Celsius to 340 at about room temperature. And it ranges as the temperature goes up, the speed of the wave gets faster. Well, as a plane approaches that that sound barrier, what's going to happen is all of the waves are going to be bunched up in the front. So you'll have a situation where we have an actual barrier of energy preventing the plane from breaking through. So when we break the sound barrier, we physically have to break through all these waves that are combining together to form a larger wave. All the waves, if we have a bunch of crests reaching the same point at the same time, which is when the plane would be at the same speed as the sound waves, there is a physical barrier that needs to be broken through in order to go faster than the speed of sound in this case. If you do that, you are now outside the circle. You're no longer inside concentric circles. And you'll see from this diagram that we have a V-shaped pattern that's formed. That V-shaped pattern forms a shock wave. The faster you go, the more narrow that V pattern will be. So if you barely break the sound barrier, it's going to be a very wide V. And if you break the sound barrier and travel much faster than the sound waves that are being produced, it's going to form a tighter V. Now remember, all waves experience this, so it's not just sound waves that can be broken. We can't break the light barrier because theoretically we can't go faster than the speed of light. However, it is possible to break the sound barrier and it's also possible to break other wave barriers. But if you look at this, the shock wave is where all of the um, crests will line up together and form a much larger wave. Now, many of us don't get to break the sound barrier in our everyday lives. So what we can think of is riding on a boat. You can actually break the, wave, the water barrier, if you will, by traveling on a boat. And the wake of the boat is where all of the crests of the waves are combining and forming a bigger wave. 
So the wake is actually a bunch of crests lining up and, and combining to form a bigger wave. We're going to have a fancy term for that in a future lesson, which is called constructive interference. When you do break the sound barrier, actually all that energy is released in a very short amount of time and you produce what's known as a sonic boom. If you hear the crack of a whip, that's an example of the end of the whip actually moving faster than the speed of sound and that crack is what's known as a sonic boom. So the crack of a whip is an example of uh, an, an event breaking the sound barrier and the sound that's produced, that loud crack noise, cracking noise, is what's known as a sonic boom. All the energy of that sound is very forceful. When a plane breaks the sound barrier, it could be strong enough to actually break windows of cars or houses that are beneath it. But either way, we can experience breaking a a wave barrier when we're in a boat and that's a more common example so the next time you're in a, a power boat or even if you're paddling a canoe fast enough you can actually produce a wake behind you and that is an example of breaking a, a wave barrier it's not the sound barrier but it's a wave barrier you're actually moving faster than the water waves are traveling so even though uh, the most common example of the Doppler effect is with sound I want you to remember that light also experiences the Doppler effect, sound experiences the Doppler effect, and other waves do as well. And in this case I, I gave before with the boat, the water waves. Now there is an equation that governs uh, the Doppler effect and I think we'll talk about that on the whiteboard. This will be more of an example for advanced study, uh, maybe an honors level example but it's an equation that combines whether or not you're traveling closer or farther away from the source and we can use that to determine what the frequency will be of a certain object if we travel towards it. So if we have a, a certain note of a sound and we travel at 30 miles an hour towards it, it will produce a note of a certain frequency and we can actually calculate that. In fact, what we can do is determine in astronomy how fast the stars are traveling farther from us and we can use the Doppler equation to do that. And at this point what I'd like to do is explore the Doppler equation using the whiteboard. So let's do that now. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Agrosa Physics. Today I would like to look at the Doppler effect equation. This is a supplemental topic and one that would be covered in an honors or an advanced placement course. Now, typically when we talked about the Doppler effect, we were able to determine whether or not the apparent frequency would go up or go down. We didn't actually find a specific value for the frequency. The Doppler equation allows us to do that. Although we should get a general feel for whether or not the apparent frequency goes up or down depending upon the relative motion, we can actually find a specific value. Now remember, objects when they move towards one another, they have an apparent frequency that goes up. Objects that move away from one another, the apparent frequency goes down. Now if we look at the Doppler equation, we'll see that it has a number of terms in it. And it looks quite cumbersome at first. The other thing you'll notice is that there are two signs for each of the terms in the fraction. The numerator and denominator both have a positive and negative sign. And that's so that we don't have to write two equations. Because the equation changes whether or not objects are moving closer to one another or farther apart. If they're moving towards one another, we use the top sign of each of the terms. If they move away from one another, we use the bottom sign. So let's just talk about what the variables represent. F itself represents the apparent frequency that we're going to find. It's the frequency that you would hear that it sounds like the object is making because of the relative motion. It could also be the color of the light that's being produced that appears to be um, being received from, to the eye. The V is the speed of the wave itself. It could typically be, in most, most cases, the speed of sound or the speed of light. So maybe 343 or something to that effect, depending upon the temperature, all the way to possibly 3 times 10 to the 8. V sub 0 or V sub O is the observer speed. So how fast the person who is hearing the sound is moving. V sub S is the speed of the source. So whatever is producing that sound, that's how fast that object is moving. In the example of a car horn, it would be how fast the car is moving. 
Finally, F sub S is the sound, um, the frequency produced by the source itself. So that would be the, the note that is being produced by the horn or siren or the color of light that is being produced by the sun or the light bulb or whatever we have. Now, that being said, the equation changes depending upon whether or not the objects are moving closer together or farther apart. In the case of moving towards one another, we use the top sign. So the equation looks like this, V plus V0 over V minus Vs. The frequencies stay the same, and it's only the terms that have the V in it that change. You notice that Vs are all in the fraction, and what will happen is all the speeds the meters per second will cancel out and we're left with a ratio. If it's above one, it'll mean the apparent frequency goes up, and if it's under one, it'll mean that the apparent frequency will go down. If the objects are moving farther apart, we use the bottom signs. So the equation would look like this. V minus V sub zero over V plus V sub s. So in that case, we'd use the bottom set of signs. Once again, it looks pretty confusing to look at the Doppler equation, but if we do a couple of sample problems on the whiteboard, I think it'll clear up any confusion that you have. All right, when dealing with the Doppler formula, we have the following. Frequency equals V plus or minus VO over V minus plus VS times frequency S. The V is the speed of the wave. VO is the, is the observer. And then VS and FS are the speed of the source and the frequency of the source. So this would be perhaps the siren or the tuning fork or something like that. Ultimately, when you have these three variables, you set up a ratio, the frequency becomes multiplied by that ratio, and you end up getting F, the apparent frequency. Frequency does not change with the Doppler formula or the Doppler effect. What happens is it appears to change. If the objects are moving toward one another, we use the top sign. If we use, if they're away, we use the bottom. So depending upon the relative motion of the two objects, the observer and the source, we're either going to use the plus and the minus or the minus and the plus. Top for toward and bottom for away. All right, this practice problem deals with the tuning fork. It has a frequency of 256 hertz. That is the original frequency, so that's the frequency of the source. There's a stationary student, which the observer is the person who's listening to, listening to the tuning fork, and it's going to be zero meters per second for V sub zero. The tuning fork is moving. So V of the source is 15 meters per second. And the speed of sound is 340 meters per second for this problem. So it's just a matter of plugging the numbers into the equation and solving for the apparent frequency. Now, they're moving closer. So we're going to use the top signs. So here's what it looks like. F equals the V is 340 meters per second plus the observer was zero meters per second all over 340 again and now it's minus because we're using the top sign 15 meters per second the original was 256 Hertz so what happens is you have 340 plus zero that's 340 you divide that by 340 minus 15, and that would be 340 minus 15. You get a 5, you get a 3, 325. So this number is going to be smaller than the top number. 
That's going to make the ratio bigger than 1. We multiply it by 256 hertz, and we end up getting 267.8 hertz. The apparent frequency of the tuning fork goes up. And that's how we use the Doppler formula for two objects moving closer to each other. We have to use the top sign for that situation. All right, in this problem, what I'd like to do is try to find out how fast someone would have to run so that their red shirt would appear to be a different color. And we'll just pick the next color in the spectrum. We'll pick orange. And what we need to do is look up a couple of pieces of information. For example, the speed of the wave is going to be the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. The frequency of red, <laughs> which spells Fred, is 3.84 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Frequency of orange is 4.82 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Finally, what I'm going to try to do is calculate the speed I need to travel. So I'm going to be moving. The observer is going to be stationary. So I'm running towards someone, and I want to find how fast I have to run. I'm the source of the red shirt. I'm going to run towards someone else. So since we're moving towards, we're going to use the top sign. Now at this point, what we're going to do is realize that the frequency that we will appear to see is this one. This is the frequency. And the source is going to be the red shirt. So according to our equation, we would have frequency V plus V naught over V minus V source times the frequency of the source. And when we plug these in, we get 4.82 times 10 to the 14 hertz. And that's going to equal the V is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second plus 0 all over. 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second minus Vs. That's our unknown. And we're going to multiply that. That's going to be our ratio that we multiply by 3.84 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Now, algebraically, this looks kind of difficult. But what we can do is we can divide by the 3.84 to the 14. 3.84 times 10 to the 14 hertz, and then cross multiply. So what I'm going to do is calculate that. 4.82 E14 divided by 3.84 E14. I'm going to get 1.2552, and that's going to equal 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second over 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second minus Vs. I have to cross multiply. So that number times 3E8, and I'm going to get a big number 3.7656. Times 10 to the 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I'm sorry, times 10 to the 8. And that's going to be minus 1.2552 Vs. This multiplies by both terms. And that's going to equal 3 times 10 to the 8 right there. We don't have to worry about units since we already substituted with units up here. Now, that being said, I need to bring, what I'm going to do is bring the 3 over and bring this term to the other side so it becomes positive. So that'll become positive, and I'll subtract the 3 times 10 to the 8 from the 3.76. All right, so 3.76 minus 3E8 gets me 7... Six five six two five zero zero equals one point two five five two Vs. Divide both sides by one point two five five two, and Vs should be one point two five five two.
6.1 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 meters per second. So it is possible to change the color of your shirt from red to orange, but you need to travel at 6.1 times 10 to the 7 meters per second.